students, on behalf of the teachers in Mathematics 8, I welcome you to the third week of school year 2020-2021. For this week's lesson, we will illustrate what rational algebraic expressions are and simplify them. Fractions are numerical representations indicating the ratio or the quotient of two numbers. This time, when we deal with fractions, we no longer just to talk about numbers like one half, three fourths, and seven thirds. Today, we will deal with fractions called rational algebraic expressions. A rational algebraic expression is a fraction that consists of a polynomial numerator and a non-zero polynomial denominator. The numerator is represented by the variable p, while the denominator is represented by the variable q. But what are polynomials? Let's review. An expression is a polynomial if every variable of that expression has a whole number exponent. Take a look at the table. Take note that an expression can only be considered a rational algebraic expression if both the numerator and the denominator are polynomials. Let's take a look at these examples. Are they RAEs or not? The numerator 5. Is it a polynomial? Yes. What about the denominator 6? Is it a polynomial? Yes. Since both P and Q are polynomials, therefore, 5 over 6 is a rational algebraic expression. What about number 2? Negative W. Does it have a denominator? Yes. What is its denominator? It is 1. Therefore, we can rewrite that as negative W over 1. Is negative W a polynomial? Yes. What about 1? Yes. Again, since both the numerator and the denominator are polynomials, therefore, negative W is a rational algebraic expression. Example number 3. Is the numerator x squared y minus 7xy squared plus 3 a polynomial? Yes. All of the exponents of the variables are whole numbers. What about the denominator negative 12z cubed? Is it a polynomial? Yes. The exponent of the variable z is a whole number. Since both the numerator and the denominator are polynomials, therefore, this expression is a rational algebraic expression. Take note, too, that if the denominator of an expression is zero, that expression is no longer a rational algebraic expression. Why not? A number whose denominator is zero is undefined. Also, if at least the numerator or the denominator of an expression is not a polynomial, therefore, that is not a rational algebraic expression. Let's find out. In number 4, is the numerator 2h minus 11 a polynomial? Yes. Is the denominator a polynomial? Yes. However, the denominator is zero. Therefore, this expression is not a rational algebraic expression. Number five, both the numerator and the denominator of this expression are not polynomials. Therefore, it is not a rational algebraic expression. But why not? The square root of x is actually equal to x raised to one half. Thus, 
the exponent of the variable is not a whole number. Aside from that, the exponent of the variable z in the denominator is also not a whole number. Remember that if at least the numerator or the denominator of an expression is not a polynomial, therefore, the expression is not a rational algebraic expression. Now that you already know what rational algebraic expressions are, let us simplify them. Simplifying rational algebraic expressions is a very important concept and skill that you need to apply whenever you come across algebraic fractions. Just like fractions, a rational algebraic expression is in its simplest form or lowest term when the only common factor to its numerator and denominator is 1. Therefore, the numerator and the denominator are relatively prime. Take a look at the expression 9c cubed over 10df squared. The factored form of the numerator is 3 times 3 times c times c times c, and the factored form of the denominator is 2 times 5 times d times f times f. There is no other common factor in the numerator and the denominator aside from 1. Therefore, the expression 9c cubed over 10df squared is already in its simplest form. Here are the steps in simplifying rational algebraic expressions. First, factor completely both the numerator and the denominator. Second, divide out pairs of common factors, one from the numerator and the other from the denominator. Let us now apply these steps in the expression kl raised to 5 over k squared l cubed. First step, factor completely both the numerator and the denominator. The complete factorization of kl raised to 5 is k times l times l times l times l times l. And the complete factorization of the denominator is k times k times l times l times l. Second step, divide out pairs of common factors, one from the numerator and the other from the denominator. Let's do that. k over k equals 1. l over l is 1. l over l is 1. And l over l is also equal to 1. For the final answer, we multiply all the remaining factors in the numerator and do the same in the denominator. So, for the final numerator, we have L times L, that would be L squared. In the denominator, we have K. The simplified form, therefore, is L squared over K. When we come across this type of expression, wherein terms in the numerator and the denominator are additive inverses of each other, just like V and negative V, negative W and W, we can either factor out negative 1 in the numerator or in the denominator. Let's do that. The first thing that we need to do is to rearrange the terms such that they are in the same order. Let's do that in the numerator. We'll be having negative w plus v all over w minus v. The w's are the first terms while the v's are the last terms. Let's factor out negative 1 in the numerator. Negative 1. To get the other factor, what we need to do is to divide each term in the numerator by negative 1. 
negative W divided by negative 1 is W. V divided by negative 1 is negative V. This is the factored form of our numerator. Then, we copy the same denominator, W minus V. We are done with step 1. Let's move on to step 2. Divide out pairs of common factors from the numerator and the denominator. And so, we'll have our final answer, negative 1. Let me repeat that whenever we encounter this type of expression, its simplified form is always equal to negative 1. For our last example, we are going to simplify the algebraic fraction t squared plus 4t plus 4 all over t cubed plus 8. Remember the different kinds of factoring techniques we have discussed? It is here where we are going to apply them. In the numerator, we are going to apply factoring perfect square trinomials. And in the denominator, we are going to apply factoring the sum of two cubes. The factored form of the numerator is the quantity t plus 2 times the quantity t plus 2, and the factored form of the denominator is the quantity t plus 2 times the quantity t squared minus 2t plus 4. That is step number 1. For step number 2, let me emphasize that we can only cancel or divide out factors and not terms. The common factors seen in the numerator and the denominator are the quantity t plus 2 and the quantity t plus 2. The lowest term of the given algebraic fraction is t plus 2 all over t squared minus 2t plus 4. Though t in the numerator and t squared and t in the denominator have common factors and 2 in the numerator and 4 in the denominator have common factors aside from 1, don't ever commit the mistake of dividing them out. Why? Because they are not factors, they are terms. We can only divide them out if the operation involved in them is multiplication, not addition nor subtraction. learners. Another set of treasures has been added to your learning box. See you again next time for the second part of our lesson on rational algebraic expressions. Adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing rational algebraic expressions is just like performing operations on fractions. Here is the rule when we multiply rational algebraic expressions. We multiply all the numerators together and multiply all the denominators together. After doing that, we simplify the answer. Tama ba ang mga pinagsasabi for the final step? To have the final answer, we multiply all the limber... For... To have... Therefore, this expression is the, the denominator of polynomial. The numerator is represented by the variable p, while the denominator is represented by the variable q. But what are polynomials? Come on, let's review. 